Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Happy... Happy St. Comey's Day, everybody. Of course, everybody celebrates Comey Day uh, in their own way. We're kind of traditionalists around here. We celebrate it by watching TV and writing jokes as fast as we can. Uh, everybody was looking forward to the former FBI director testifying about all the juicy details of his meetings with Donald Trump. Because remember, Comey wrote everything down. <laughs> and all his memos are going to be collected in his new children's book, James and the Guilty Orange. <laughs> and now, heartwarming. It's a lost masterpiece. Tim Burton's going to make a movie of it. And now... Your former FBI director standing six foot eight out of the University of Chicago and out of a job, James Comey! And now... Of course, this is extremely important testimony. So first, they had to swear him in. Please stand. Again, he's like six foot eight. <laughs> Let's go back up here. Comey. Comey. Sorry, my eyes are up here. My eyes are up here. Comey opened his testimony by talking about why he thinks he lost his job. When I was appointed FBI director in 2013, I understood that I served at the pleasure of the president. And then when I read the Russia dossier, I saw what gave the president pleasure, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> I'm a digga, 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 digga. Allegedly. So, Comey understood Trump had the right to fire him, but he did not buy the official explanation that it was because of how he treated candidate Hillary Clinton. That didn't make sense to me for a whole bunch of reasons including the time and all the water that had gone under the bridge since those hard decisions that had to be made. Oh, I remember that bridge. I think it's the one they threw Hillary off of to see if she was a witch. <laughs> and, and remember, I remember she, she hit the water. She lost the election, so that means... A witch! A witch! That's our Supreme Court in action. And <laughs> Comey wasn't that upset when he lost his job, but he didn't like it when Trump went after his true love. And although the law required no reason at all to fire an FBI director, the administration then chose to defame me and, more importantly, the FBI by saying that the organization was in disarray, that it was poorly led, that the workforce had lost confidence in its leader. Those were lies, plain and simple. That would be a good name for a Trump family law firm. <laughs> lies, plain and simple. <laughs> and... <laughs> lies, plain and simple. And that's one of the biggest bombshells today. Comey flat out saying the president of the United States lied. In fact, Comey said this when asked why he took such detailed notes. A combination of things. I think the circumstances, the subject matter, and the person I was interacting with. So the only things that raised red flags about his meetings with Trump were where, why, what, and who. <laughs> when was fine. Anything specific, sir, about the person you were interacting with? And please be honest. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting. He thought Trump might lie? <laughs> That's razor-sharp FBI instinct in action right there. <laughs> Fellas, look. Look, fellas, I don't want to get out over my skis here, but I think this dead body might not be alive. <laughs> of course, with an accusation like that, you can't let that go unanswered. Uh, any response from the White House? I can definitively say the president's not a liar. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh, does the president have anything to say? I'm not a crook. Oh, wow. 
Okay, good. Good. I gotta say, he looks good. Trump. He looks really good. Trump. Trump looks really good there. He's lost weight and uh, and makeup. Uh, of course, this whole thing, including his firing, is really about Russian interference in our 2016 election. The president has called this whole story fake news. Uh, what say you? Do you have any doubt that the Russian government was behind the intrusions in the DNC and the DCCC systems and the subsequent leaks of that information? No, no doubt. Do you have any doubt that officials of the Russian government were fully aware of these activities? No doubt. What's your favorite 90s ska punk band? No doubt. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. I go with that. That or Sublime. Okay, it seems clear enough, but is there any metaphorical way you could explain your lack of doubt? There should be no fuzz on this whatsoever. The Russians interfered in our election during the 2016 cycle. They did it with purpose. They did it with sophistication. They did it with overwhelming technical efforts. And it was an active measures campaign driven from the top of that government. There is no fuzz on that. There it is. The Russians hacked us. And the only way there could be less fuzz on that <laughs> is if the Brazilians hacked us. <laughs> Just ah, Yes. Comey, Comey used a metaphor to explain his refusal to enter what he called a patronage relationship with the president. The Statue of Justice has a blindfold on because you're not supposed to be peeking out to see whether your patron is pleased or not with what you're doing. Okay, but to be fair, you know Trump has never looked above her neck. <laughs> and the senators did not hold back with their inquiry. Here's the question. You're big, you're strong. Can you open this jar of raspberry <laughs> preserves for me? Because it's just... <laughs> then Comey dropped really one of the biggest bombshells of the hearing, that he shared his own memos with the press. And finally, did you show copies of your memos to anyone outside of the Department of Justice? Yes, I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons. I was worried the media was camping at the end of my driveway at that point. And I worried it would be like feeding seagulls at the beach if, if, it was, if it was I who gave it to the media. That's kind of insulting to the media <laughs> that they couldn't, they would never stop coming back if you gave them this thing. Do they have a response? Of course, they spent a lot of the hearing talking about Comey's one-on-one -on -one dinner with Trump. Uh, how did that come about again? He wanted to have dinner because he wanted to stay on. I think he asked for the dinner. Okay, Director Comey, is that how you remember it? No. He, call he called me at my desk at lunchtime and asked me, uh, was I free for dinner that night? Okay, but you don't have any details, do you? And then he said, uh, how about 6.30? And I, I said, whatever works for you, sir. And then I hung up and I had to call my wife and break a date with her. I was supposed to take her out to dinner that night. Uh, and That's uh, one of the all-time great excuses for breaking a date. Yeah. <laughs> In retrospect, I would have... I love spending time with my wife. I wish <laughs> I'd been there that night. <laughs> On the plus side, if you hadn't gone to dinner with him that night, you wouldn't have so much time to spend with your wife now. <laughs> so... So... Sir! <laughs> spending time with your wife. Spending time with your wife. I'll applaud for that. The whole thing concluded with John McCain, who proved he is a maverick when it comes to being able to understand him. I think that the American people have a whole lot of questions out there, particularly since you just emphasized the role that Russia played. And obviously, she was a candidate for president at the time, so she was clearly involved in this whole situation where fake news, uh, as you just described it, big deal, uh, took place. In other words, we're complete, the investigation of 
anything that former Secretary Clinton had to do with the campaign is over and we don't have to worry about it anymore? With respect to Secretary, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little confused, Senator. Not as much as he is.